If you own an SCT long enough, there will come the day where you want to tear it down and get inside. In which case you're going to want to stay tuned to this video because I'm going to show you exactly how to completely tear down a Celestron C11 just like this one here, step by step. There are a lot of different reasons why you'd want to tear into your Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. A common reason would be to clean the backside of the corrector plate or maybe cl clean the primary mirror. Or in the case of my 14 inch SCT, I got the Hyperstar stuck on there and I had to take the whole corrector plate off just to get the Hyperstar off. Moral of the story, don't over tighten your Hyperstar. Or maybe you want to flock the inside of the tube. Or in the case of my friend Dave, he wanted to do quite a few modifications to the inside of his telescope which we'll go into in another video. But in this video, we're gonna concentrate on the process for taking this apart step by step and then showing you how to put it back together again. Before we get started, I would ask you to help me grow this channel by pressing the like button down below the video. And if you wanna see more of these helpful astronomy videos that I'm making, please subscribe. So now that the retaining ring is taken off, the next step was to put some tape markers so we get the orientation of the corrector plate correct when we put it back in. And the only thing that's holding the corrector plate in right now is a, a few set screws and I'm gonna take the top two and just turn them a quarter turn off and then the corrector plate's gonna pop out. So the next step is to remove the outer tube and we can either take off the front ring first or we can just go for it and take off the back ring and I think we're just going to go for it and try to take off the back ring. So I need to get a wrench on the nuts inside and then a screwdriver on the outside. I have backed the mirror all the way up.
There it is. <laughs> so now the tube has been removed from the base plate and we can set it aside. Whoops, there we go. To get the last screw out of the OTA and the base plate I had to take off the, the rail at the base of the telescope because the screw was hidden underneath. But I'm actually now going to remount the rail I think onto the base plate just to give it some ability to uh, stabilize a little bit. I see I have a lot of flora <laughs> inside my tube. These are all birch tree seeds come from my neighbor. <laughs> it has to be cleaned up before we're done. So now uh, that the cylinder OTA is off, the next step is to now move the mirror to its most forward position and then remove the focusing mechanism. And at that point, uh, the next step will be to remove this retainer ring. And once the retainer ring is off and the focusing mechanism is decoupled from the mirror, the mirror will just now slide off, which it looks like it will. So that's what we're going to do next. So next step is we're going to remove the focusing control system and we're going to remove the locks for the mirror in this uh, Edge HD system. So here we go.
So now we're ready to begin the assembly, but the first step is to put grease on the inner baffle tube and grease on the outer baffle tube. So on the inner baffle tube, I'm using again this Crytox uh, high quality grease that's very high temperature capable and also chemically inert and also has very high viscosity. And so it's actually an excellent grease, although slightly expensive. Anyway, it doesn't take very much to grease this, so we just have one bead here and one bead here, and in a minute I'm going to just rub that in and, and cover the whole area. I'm also putting two beads inside the outer one, and the reason I'm doing that is because there's a relief zone inside the outer baffle, and I want to make sure there's plenty of grease where we're going to put the nylon screws to put our little tension on the inner baffle. The way I reached in and got the grease is I put a little bead on this brass rod and I stuck it in and just rolled it off. So now I'm actually going to uh, spread the grease on this. It really doesn't take very much because the clearance is so tight on the baffle, outer baffle and inner baffle that any more grease than this is actually going to just get scraped off by the baffle interaction anyway. But you do want to get it all the way around as best you can. So now I'm getting a nice good coverage on all of the inner baffle surface. That's good for that. And then on the relief area on the inner outer baffle, I'm just going to take my rod and try and spread it a little bit just to get it spread out. Because the close fit areas will get plenty of grease off of the shaft. Okay, so we're ready to put the mirror on. Everything's greased up. I got the bearings lined, or the threaded rod lined up. So I'm starting to engage the baffles. The lock nuts in the back are loose so that I can make sure I can hit the holes. Okay, we've made uh, alignment and got everything in place. And the mirror is on. Now the only thing we have to do is put the lock ring on and then that means the mirror is in place and won't come off the inner shaft. And that's that. So now the mirror is locked from coming off and we can slide it all the way back and let's push it all the way back. Let's, uh, I think we're good but I'm not hearing it contact the base. Ah, now there it is. Good, so then that's that. Clean up a little of the grease that made contact with the inner baffle. There we go. I'm ready. Okay, well, the mirror's now been assembled. We've checked it out with the motor. The motor seems to turn the, the mirror in and out really nice. We got our tightened on our uh, nylon screw. So I think we're really ready to wrap this up and assemble. Now, I am going to take some time and clean the mirror, but I'm not, we're not going to show that on the video. But I just want to show that the next series of steps is as follows. So... Once the mirror is clean, then we're just going to replace the outer tube like we took it off. And we're going to line up the holes and we're going to put the holes in and tighten the nuts down. And then the next step is going to be to put the corrector plate back in according to the original alignment that we did and put in its retaining ring. And then the telescope is assembled except for the secondary mirror. At this point, of the assembly we need to do some alignment work and so we're going to shift the telescope out into the setup we have for the Hotec laser alignment system and do all the final alignments. We're going to align the corrector plate, we're going to align the secondary mirror, and we're going to align the hyperstar attachment on this telescope. And that should be the end of this job. Hopefully it's all going to work well and we're going to get some improvements and maybe we'll report on some improvements later if we get them. Congratulations on making it this far in the video because I have some bonus information for you. But first, don't forget to 
like the video down below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more interesting astronomy uh, helpful videos. Also, I would encourage you to check out my website, californiaskies.com, for more astronomy uh, tips, tricks, and reviews. Now, this additional information. During the filming of this video, we discovered something quite interesting about the Celestron motorized focuser, which we think contributes significantly to a mirror flop. Not only mirror shift, but mirror flop. And we'll show you that in a separate video and what Dave did and also what I did on mine to uh, improve, improve that, to try and take out some of that additional mirror flop. In the third video, we're gonna show you why Dave went through all the trouble to disassemble his C11. The whole reason Dave went through the trouble of disassembling his C11 was to do several upgrades to the telescope, including adding some nylon screws between the outer and inner baffle to take out some of the play between the two to further improve mirror flop when he was imaging. He also added a weather station inside the telescope, which monitors the temperature and humidity at the mirror. He also added some internal fans and baffle tubes so that he could try and make laminar flow across the face of the mirror. And then, of course, he did some flocking on the inside of the aluminum tube itself. So that's much too much to put in this video. But that's the whole reason he went through this process. And I'll put that video together, edit it, and post it soon. So have a look for that as well. So once again, thank you for watching. And continue to look for my videos as well as the blogs on my website.